What's up, everyone, and welcome to Best Car Reviews. I'm Ben, and today, instead of doing our car review, we're going to be going through GDI engines. Here at Best Car Reviews, I try to bring you the most accurate and relevant information under 10 minutes. There's no misleading and no wasted time. If that's something that's intriguing to you, then please like and subscribe so I can continue to grow the channel. Let's get started. To begin this video, we're going to get a very simple definition, clear understanding of what a GDI engine is. So GDI, gas, direct, injection engines work by injecting uh, fuel at very high pressure at very specific times into the combustion chamber. This differs from older engines as those inject directly into the manifold. These have become much more popular in recent times, specifically from 2010 on, as it's said to have increased 600% on the market during that time period. Since this engine setup relies on injection at specific times into that combustion chamber, as the engine speed increases, the amount of time available to inject the fuel decreases. In order to increase fuel delivery, delivery in a shorter amount of time to produce more power, the fuel pressure is increased. So these GDIs have very specific pressure levels they're able to obtain. A side effect of the high pressure of the fuel is overspray, and that lands on the intake valve and the ports. This leads to carbon buildup. And carbon buildup on your car's intake valves reduces fuel flow to the engine and can lead to failure. As we all know, engine failure means your car is done. It's toast. Um, that's obviously the heart and soul, and an engine is not easily replaced by any means. The biggest drawback of direct fuel injection is DI can lead to clogged fuel systems and engine carbon fill up. So that is the downfall of GDI engines, but there are a lot of good sides to it as well. So let's take a look at some pros and cons next to each other to better understand what exactly is good and what is bad. Okay, so here we go with a list of pros and cons of these GDI engines. This is compiled from several different websites, reputable sites that offer a lot of information on this topic, but this is what I came up with are the best notes. The pros, starting off, improved fuel efficiency higher output power values, no throttle losses, more flexible engine timing capacity, wider, ra wider range of fuel-air mix combinations, and reduced exhaust emissions. So obviously these are big things that are pros. Um, do either have these things or to not, obviously you'd much rather have them. So there's a lot here to like. Um, and arguably more to like than there is to dislike. It just happens to be the dislike leads to failure of your car. So now we move over to the cons, and here we go with the biggest one. No valve cleaning action like the other mode, or the other mode, the other type of engine, um, but this leads to increased carbon deposits, and that will lead potentially to the downfall of your engine. Limited power at high RPMs due to fuel only being injected during intake and compression phases. I touched on that before. As I said, these are only uh, the fuel is only injected at specific times, which means as the RPMs go up, the engine is moving faster, that time uh, decreases. So uh, limited power at high RPMs is a con of this for sure. And this one, I had to go deep into an article to find this, but it's worth noting. This does produce more black carbon aerosols, which absorb solar radiation more intensely uh, than regular emissions, and therefore is a major contributor, or more so contributor, to climate change. According to The Drive, nearly 75% of vehicles made in the U.S. by the most popular companies have GDI engines, and the companies obviously with the biggest spotlight on them in this category is Hyundai and Kia. So I'm gonna to try to kind of separate fact from fiction here, exactly what's going wrong with Kia and Hyundai's engines, and if it's actually related just to them being GDI engines or if there's more going on. So I'll read this, this is according to The Drive. Collectively, Hyundai and Kia have been dealing with issues with the Theta GDI engines for years now, and particularly the 2.0 liter and 2.4 liter Theta 2 models. The problems largely center around manufacturing defects in the crankshafts. Metallic shavings and burrs from the crankshaft milling process were left behind and would enter the oil channels of the engine. Over time, this material can block off oil flow to parts of the engine, causing accelerated wear and eventual 
bearing failure. There are millions of these Kias and Hyundais facing this issue. A class action lawsuit has led to many of these cases being eligible for full engine replacement between the years 2011 and 2019. Obviously though, engines aren't, are hard to come by quickly and require significant time to install as well as the capability of whoever's doing it to actually install it right. This leads to a slow process if you're one of the people facing this issue. It's also said in the suit that Hyundai and Kia have been ignoring, uh, honoring their warranties if customers don't provide all service reports to them of their vehicles. Obviously, there are real issues with Kia and Hyundai's engines during this time period, but the general downfall of GDI engines is not the exact reasons why their engines are failing. They aren't failing because they are only GDI engines. That's not it. It's not just simply, oh, okay, Kia and Hyundai's engines suck because they're GDIs. That's just not true. So many companies have these out. It's other factors that are causing this. Yes, maybe some specifically due to carbon build up, but most of the cases are not that. Um, as I said, so many companies are producing these. It's not only the fact that it's a GDI that they are failing. I owned a 2008 Hyundai Sonata as my first vehicle. Never had a single issue with it. It was a great ride, a great running car. The engine never had anything, no oil issues, anything. A close friend has a used 2013 Sonata, doesn't have any issues with his. I have several other friends with Hyundais and they love their cars. On the other hand, I have a friend who had a Kia Optima and it was a total lemon and failed him constantly. The dealer also never helped him. As much as these engines have problems, Hyundai and Kia are contributors to in themselves. And I say that as a longtime Hyundai fan and obviously Kia sells like there's no tomorrow. So people are still buying their vehicles. So the question is, should you stop from owning one of these brands, I say no, but I would avoid anything pre-2019 at this point to cover your basis because those are the problem years and more than likely the one that you want to buy has one of those particular two engines, the 2 liter and the 2.4 liter that have most of the issues. Despite all the drama with these GDI engines and all the potential fear that your engine is going to crap out on you, not all hope is lost. In addition to all those pros, there's very kind of simple ways and straightforward ways to help prevent any of those bad things from happening like carbon buildup. Uh, three of those things. One is to replace the spark plugs at their recommended mileages. This is going to be key in eliminating a lot of that kind of fuel uh, use buildup all the stuff that's going on in there, just replace your spark plugs. It will make a big difference. Replace filters, use quality fuel. And uh, this is the number one one that you see when you look on websites about this. Use the certain GDI additives to your fuel. These will help clean engine parts that are not going to get cleaned without those additives. And that can make the difference between never having an issue with this and absolutely having an issue with this. Interview guys. GDI engine is not something to fear. Um, it's definitely feels like it though if you don't know all the facts. And there's many different websites that have produced articles on this. Uh, if you want more specific details, um, you know a lot more details, and you can look at those sites. But they can give very complex definitions. And it can still be confusing. Um, this is kind of the simplest way to put it, and kind of simplest way to justify if you should fear these engines or not. And the bottom line is no. But there are definitely some vehicles with a track record that isn't so hot and if you're in the market for a vehicle and you're looking at an older used vehicle just do your homework figure out what the engine is figure out if it's had any major issues figure out if it's going to give you any problems quickly or down the road as you should with any car purchase but don't fear specifically gdi engines they have great properties to them they just need to be well maintained and they really shouldn't give you any issues you know there shouldn't be an engine put out on the market that's going to give you issues. Uh, just do your regular maintenance, keep an eye on things, be a smart operator and owner, and everything will be fine. Hopefully this video laid things out in a clear way for you guys. Thank you for watching this Best Car Review. Please subscribe if not already, and I'll catch you on the next Best Car Review.